Well, good morning to all my friends in Australia who are attending this webinar, and good evening to anyone in uh, the United States here with me who's tuned in, or uh, perhaps good middle of the night to anyone in Europe who's interested in data trends in audio in Australia. Uh, but welcome to the Infinite Dial 2020 presentation. And before I get going, I do just want to express how sad I am that I'm not down there with you all in Australia, as was expected and as was planned, and as I have done for each of the last three years uh, before this presentation. And uh, to tell you all that uh, I'm glad to hear that things are generally going so well in Australia relative to other parts of the world, and how much I look forward to presenting Infinite Dial 2021 down in Australia and to see all of you again in person. But like so many aspects of uh, life today, we soldier on and we do the next best thing, which is a webinar like this. And I'm really pleased to present the, the fourth iteration of our Infinite Dial study alongside our partners in this project, who you can see down there at the bottom of the slide, Commercial Radio Australia, our friends at SCA through their Podcast One subsidiary, and our longtime friends at Triton Digital, uh, who sponsor uh, the US Infinite Dial and a number of the other studies around the world. So thank you to all our partners um, for keeping this project going and providing this interesting information to anyone who might want it. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you through a variety of sections and points of discussion about uh, the world of audio and digital audio, et cetera. So I'll start by just describing the study. We will go into a section about radio and radio simulcast, as we pronounce that word. Uh, then we'll look at the in-car audio environment, the red-hot topic of podcasting, online audio in general, the equally red-hot topic of smart speakers, streaming services, and then finally I'll provide some observations at the end. After I finish the presentation, I'll be happy to address any questions that come up along the way. You can type them into the Q&A box as part of this webinar. You'll also see at the lower right-hand corner of the page the hashtag Infinite Dial, and if you care to tweet about the study, please use that hashtag. So what are we doing here? Uh, the, as most of you will know, this study explores the penetration of digital audio and online audio as various other things uh, in Australia. It's um, based on the American Infinite Dial study, which has been running since 1998, believe it or not. So um, for over 22 years now, this is our fourth annual Infinite Dial Australia report. So we now have some really excellent trending data to look at. And the idea is to allow for direct comparisons between the Australian and US markets to see where's Australia ahead, where is Australia behind relative to the United States, etc. We also now are doing Infinite Dial in three other countries, uh, in Canada, Germany, and South Africa. And uh, we will show some of the data from those as well as we get a greater picture of sort of what the world looks like with regard to some of these measures and how Australia compares to all these other countries. So the data we're going to look at today was collected in the first quarter of the year and importantly prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we did a national telephone survey of 1,014 Australians aged 12 and over and this study is designed to fully and rep with representation uh, show what the population of Australia looks like. So we're following all the procedures that good survey researchers do to reflect the population of Australia. Uh, I want to hit on the point for a minute about the fact that it was done prior to the current pandemic. I think we will be glad in 2021 and, and subsequent years that the timing of the study was as it was. Yes, it would be convenient to think about what is different during this disruption, during the pandemic period, 
as compared to what things were like just before. But in as much as we can at least hope that life will have returned to some level of normalcy, especially down in Australia, by the first quarter of 2021, I think seeing these trends over time without this big sort of jagged moment uh, reflected will give us a better sense. And even doing it next year, we'll get a better sense for one year's trending with this disruption in the middle. You know, how did that change things, but not looking at it in the depths of the disruption. So I think we're going to be glad with the timing of this. And there's plenty, plenty of other research about media habits and what's going on sort of within the COVID-19 period. So keep in mind as you look in this, at this data that it was collected before the disruptions of this COVID-19 period. So we'll start with the section about radio and radio simulcast and uh, update some numbers that we've shown before. So first we just ask about have you listened to radio sort of in any of its forms, live or catch up podcasts in the last month? Um, and you see that we basically get the same estimate this year, 85% as compared to 87% last year. We also look at it for the last week and we get, again, basically the same result we got last year, down one little tick from 83 to 82%. But essentially flat numbers on having listened to live radio or catch up podcasts of radio in the last week. And a huge number, 82% of all Australians saying that they have done so. Um, you see that if you break that down, uh, you see the slow transition in Australia from it being entirely over the air uh, now to at least somewhat um, numbers from online. So in each of the last couple studies, we've seen the percentage who say they've listened to radio content over the air go down a little bit, but still a huge number. And the percentage of people who say they've consumed radio content online going up a little bit from nine up to 12%. Those combined numbers would be, would be what we were looking at a second ago. And what really stands out about Australian radio and has been the case in every uh, iteration of the Australian study is how much higher those numbers are in Australia as compared to what we see in now the four other countries where we are doing the infinite dial study. So you see, um, these are in sort of sequential order of when they were last fielded. Um, and you see the Australian number uh, fourth there in green, 82% of all Australians saying they've listened to broadcast radio content in the last week. And notice the other four countries get pretty similar numbers uh, in the 60s um, and Australia up there in the 80s. So dramatically, dramatically higher. And this is, again, something we've seen quite consistently that Australian radio uh, is quite probably the strongest radio industry uh, in the world, uh, but certainly among the countries we're looking at here. And I just want to throw in the quick proviso, and you, uh, is that South Africa is among what's called the major metro commercial population. Uh, so the other four countries would be exactly the same in ter terms of, in this case, 18 plus population. Uh, that's the one age group that all of them have in common. Germany, U.S., Australia, and Canada would be the total population. South Africa would represent about 20% of South Africa that they would call their major market uh, commercial population, which is the sector of South Africa that is most similar to uh, these four other countries. Uh, but back to the main point here, uh, again, notice how much higher the Australian figure is than what we see in the four other countries as a percentage of people saying that they've listened to radio in the week before we called them. If we look at online radio, so this is listening to online AM or FM or DAB plus content. Uh, and if someone said that they, in Australia, said that they had listened to radio in this fashion in the last month, we asked, how are you mostly doing that? Are you mostly doing it through a radio station's website? through the radio station's app on, a, on your phone, on a mobile device, or through an aggregator such as the radio app or TuneIn. And we see slow change here, but we are definitely seeing some change. The uh, percentage on a radio station's website dropped between two years ago and last year. It stayed pretty much the same. 
But the real story is over there on the right, and that is development for listening through aggregators, again, such as the radio app or tune in. Now up to 27% of people who say they listen to online radio saying that is how they are listening to online radio the most. Now let's look at some of the trends we're tracking with regard to in-car media and what people are listening to in their cars in Australia. So here we see trending along all four of the studies we've done in Australia asking just if you've been in a car in the last month, which is most Australians, uh, do you currently use these audio sources? And the way you read these graphs, uh, they go down within the little pods of numbers there. The orange bar is the current data from 2020. And so you see that by far and away, the most used in-car audio option, no surprise, is radio. So AM or FM or DAB plus radio, 83%, a slight uh, decrease from previous studies, but still way, way out ahead of anything else that people are listening to. If you want to see the changes that are really going on in the in-car environment, the next two clusters of data really show it. So you see that as of only three years ago in 2017, 59% of Australians said they used a CD player at least sometimes in their car. You see that number has dropped very, very dramatically, and our current estimate is 32%. But so now just under a third of Australians using a CD player in their car. And you see that being matched on the next group with online audio streaming services. So as use of a CD player has gone down, use of streaming services has gone up. And that seems to support the generally true argument that, in, that mostly online audio streaming services, obviously Spotify, Apple Music, and the like, are really replacing people's owned music, which largely in the car environment was being consumed from a CD player. And you really see that transference there going on on this graph. Uh, owned digital music, listening to digital music, perhaps through a, a USB port or even through your phone, uh, drops again after a big drop last year, drops down a little bit. Podcasting, which we'll have a whole section about coming up later, uh, ticks up again, so it's gone up a little bit in in-car uh, in each of the studies we've done, now up to 14%. And then small numbers for an in-dash system and small numbers each year, 4% for online AM, FM, which again, if you have a regular radio in your car, there's not a lot of call to listen to the streams of online radio unless you want to listen to a station that's not available locally, perhaps. How did those numbers compare to what we see in the United States? So... Some are very similar and some are quite, quite different. The radio number, essentially exactly the same, still a little bit higher, again, as continues that theme about Australia being a little bit stronger than the United States. So on this graph, the Australian number is the green number and the U.S. number is the lower number, the blue number. Um, use of a CD player is now lower in Australia by a number of points as compared to the U.S. number. Uh, the Big, big differences we see here are own digital music, where a large percentage of Americans are saying that they are uh, listening to their own music, likely largely through their phones and connecting their phones into their cars and listening to music that way, and significantly higher numbers for podcasts. And we'll see that again in the podcasting section, where podcast listening is more developed in the United States than we see in Australia. Finally, uh, online audio services, about the same uh, between the two countries. And then we in the United States have something that you're unlikely to ever have in Australia just because the economies of North America versus Australia, 24% uh, of Americans say that they use Sirius XM satellite radio in their cars. And that's a big competitor uh, to a lot of the other options that people have. So back to only Australian data and trended over time, what do you use most in your car? Um, 
And we see here that, again, overwhelmingly, the thing that people say they use the most in their car is the radio, AM, FM, or DAB radio. Um, but two-thirds now, 66% saying the radio. And you see what's growing is internet-only audio. So people streaming uh, sources such as Spotify or Apple Music or the streams of really anything uh, that they might uh, want to listen to in the car. But still, overwhelmingly, broadcast radio is what people listen to most in the car. We've also tracked this number. Have you ever listened to online audio in a car through your cell phone? And we see that continuing to grow as people acquire newer cars that make listening to online audio in any form through their phone um, easier and easier. We see those numbers uh, continue to grow now up to 40% of people saying they've ever done this. Um, you know, now it can be done so readily through apps such as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as just connecting through Bluetooth or through an aux jack. And we see that this is becoming an increasingly common way that Australians will consume audio in a car. Now let's turn to what is surely the hottest topic in audio today, podcasting, and see what our trends look like in Australia. So first we just asked about awareness of the term podcasting, and as we've done in each of the four studies. And you see that that number keeps rising and in fact rises generously, starting at 72% in our first study a few years ago, and now up to 87% of everyone in Australia saying they've heard of this concept, they know what the word podcasting means, or at least they're familiar with the idea. So significant growth, now 87% of Australians saying they're aware of podcasting. And look at how that compares to the number in the United States. Way out ahead, 12 percentage points ahead. And this has been true in each of the four studies. Australians have been more aware of the concept of podcasting in each of the four studies we've done. And you see, not by a little bit, it's way out ahead of the American number and probably several years ahead of that number getting to that level in the United States. Here's our estimate of podcast listening, probably the most looked at number from the infinite dial studies we do. Have you listened to a podcast in the last month? And we see that that number has grown as it has each year now up to 25%. So one in four of all Australians saying that they've listened to a podcast in the month before we contacted them. Uh, and we see that that number grows every year up three percentage points year on year, this year up to 25%. But we see the same pattern that we've seen in all four of our studies with regard to the comparison to the American numbers. So all four years, while awareness of the term podcasting has been higher, usage of podcasting has been lower as compared to the numbers we see in the United States. And as you can readily see on this graph, our estimate for monthly podcast listening is almost exactly two years behind our estimate from the United States. And the numbers in the U.S. have really generously jumped over the last several years. And while we see increases in Australia, they're not quite as fast. So probably the single most common question we've gotten is what is your interpretation? Why are we seeing the awareness of podcasting so much higher in Australia, but the usage so much lower? I think in both cases, it comes back to the nature of the radio industry in Australia as compared to in the United States. The Australian radio industry started talking about podcasting more and more generously uh, a lot earlier than it did in the United States. So I think Australian radio really promoted the term and promoted the idea of a podcast, of on-demand audio consumption. I think it mostly promoted it, though, as a catch-up service. Did you miss the breakfast show? Did you miss the drive show? Now you can listen to it as a podcast. And while compelling to some people, catch-up radio has a limitation in how many people are going to want to consume it. And I think it's plausible that for a lot of Australians, all podcasting meant to them was catch up radio. And they maybe were missing out, maybe are still missing out to a certain degree on the enormous world of bespoke podcasts about anything under the sun, any topic you might think of, and all the quality and things that are available there. Uh, as 
bespoke podcasts for Australia, you know, in the Australian accent for Australians become more common as is rapidly happening. I do think these numbers will likely uh, converge and we'll see the Australian numbers getting closer to the American numbers as Australians get a better sense for the everything that's possible in the world of podcasting. I also think it's possible that podcasting is held back a bit by what we said before about broadcast radio. People seem to use and like broadcast radio more in Australia than in some of these other places. So maybe the need for a replacement for something else to listen to isn't as compelling for Australians. But for whatever reason, the numbers continue to track a couple years behind what we see in the United States. We also look at weekly. Have you listened to a podcast in the last week? And the same uh, jump year by year, uh, two, three points. This year, two points, up to 17% of Australians saying they've listened to a podcast in the last week. And again, that tracks to exactly two years ago, uh, our estimate in the United States. So awareness higher, usage a couple years behind in Australia as compared to the American numbers. Then we looked at a variety of other things about podcasts. This is among anyone who says that they've ever listened to a podcast. We asked, where do you listen to podcasts? They could say yes to any or all. And you see overwhelmingly people say if they've listened to podcasts, they listen at home. A little under half say they ever listen in a car driving around. And then lower percentages for walking around on public transport, at work, or at a gym while working out. So at home, still the main place people are listening to podcasts, but a variety of other places that people consume them as well. On what device do people who listen to podcasts listen? Well, we've seen from the beginning that on their phones is where people are listening to podcasts, but we've seen that number get bigger and bigger over time. And now 85% of people listen to podcasts in Australia saying the primary place they're listening is through their phone. And that's really come at the expense of people listening through their computers. How often do you listen to podcasts? Well, 20% of the people who say they've ever listened to a podcast say they listen every day. Um, and uh, the you know, another 24% saying at least once a week. So if you listen to podcasts, you're listening somewhat regularly, uh, although there's a chunk that just listens very occasionally, you see down the, at the bottom of this pie chart. If you listen to a podcast, you typically listen to the entire podcast. Most of the podcasts are less than half of the podcast. 57% say they typically listen to the entire podcast, which is good news for anyone selling ads inside podcasts. People are saying they typically stick through all of it and likely will hear most or all of the ads that are run within the podcast. If you downloaded the podcast, when do you typically listen to it? 50% said the last podcast they downloaded, they listened to it within 24 hours. Uh, virtually everyone said within a week. So if you're going to go to the effort of downloading a podcast, typically you're going to listen to it quite readily. And finally, if you've listened to any podcast in the last week, how many podcasts have you listened to? And you see the average is six podcasts listened to in the last week. So a growing number of people saying they've listened to the last week and the same number we've seen before, six podcasts on average. And you see, you know, in that green there, there's 10% of people who say they listen to 11 or more. People who are really deep into podcasts. And everyone on this webinar knows at least one person like that, or maybe you are that person. Certainly I am that person who's deep into podcasts and listening to them all the time. Now let's look at a couple more items relating to online audio, listening to any audio through the internet, online, through your phone or your computer, what have you. So each year we've asked anyone who has listened to online audio to make an estimate of how much time in the last week they have spent doing so. And what this graph shows is that in each subsequent year, while the number of people who say they've listened to online audio in any fashion has grown, their self-reported time doing so has also grown. So jumping another 90 minutes here, hour and a half from estimated 11 hours to over 12 and a half hours. And while this is a bit of a blunt instrument, people aren't necessarily going to have a finely tuned estimate of how many hours in the last week they've done something. 
when you ask the same question in the same way year after year, you're looking for the trend. And the trend here is rather straightforward. People are doing it more uh, and they're doing it longer. And this probably is a bit of an inexorable trend. And there's been plenty of looks at what's going on in this current COVID-19 period. Uh, but it'll be very interesting to see how this number might change next year when we look at the 2021 data. And then we also asked people what device they ever use to listen to online audio. And again, this is trended through the four years with the orange bars being the most current data. And we see that the main story here is the smartphone is overwhelmingly how people are listening to online audio. Now, 83% of those who are doing it saying this is how they do so with smaller percentages saying on their computers or on a tablet. A little jump this year in smart TV or TV device down at the bottom. But we also see a sizable jump in people saying they ever listen to online audio on a smart speaker. So let's move into that topic, which is surely the alongside podcasting, the hottest topic going in the world of audio today. So we first just asked about, are you aware of smart speakers? We asked about various brand and brands, and this is the percentage of people saying they're, they're aware of any of them. Again, this is across the five countries we've now done it in, and Australia is in fourth position there in green. And you see, true to so much of what we see about in Australia, the highest percentage of awareness here, 85% of Australians saying they're familiar with at least one of the brands that are available of smart speakers. Uh, five points clear of our American estimate and then farther ahead of Canada, Germany, and these products are very new in, in South Africa. And so awareness is quite modest there. Do you own a smart speaker? Well, we've now asked this question three times and you see another jump from 13% up to 17% of Australians now saying that they own a smart speaker. How does that number compare to the US? Well, again, our pattern continues. This number is almost exactly two years behind our estimate for the United States. So two years ago, we had 18% uh, as our 12 plus estimate for smart speaker ownership in the US. Um, and the number is 17% in Australia today. So about two years behind our estimate. We also can look at how that compares to these other countries. And you see um, the ownership is um, in the middle among the countries we looked at. Canada, actually the highest. Germany, surprisingly the lowest. There's lots of awareness, but not a lot of usage yet. In South Africa, among the modest number of people who have heard of them, a sizable percentage say they own one. Uh, so it's gotten in to a certain degree there. But uh, you see Australia sort of in the middle in terms of smart speaker ownership. And what brand do they own? And that's clear. The only one really widely available and widely marketed in Australia is the Google Home. And you see overwhelmingly, if you own one, that's the brand that you own. 17% total, 14% for Google Home. Uh, yes, some people own more than one brand, but basically you need all these other brands to bring up that other 3% that make a 17% total. One thing that we now see in Australia that we've seen uh, elsewhere is that if people have them, they tend to get more of them. So last year, three quarters of people who had any had one. You see in orange, that's down to 56%, meaning 44% of people who have a smart, smart speaker. And mind you, that's a uh, bigger number now. Uh, a much bigger percentage also say they have more than one. So we're looking at the percentage of people who say they have at least one, but to try to think about devices, you see that many people have more than one. So one perhaps in the bedroom and one in the kitchen or the family room or what have you, as people populate more of their houses with them once they start to get them. And you see our estimate of 1.7 per household in Australia also lags the United States. So not only do people in the United States, are they more likely to have one, if they have one, they're more likely to have yet more. So this is another area that we can track and try to get a sense for how far behind Australia is of the U.S. numbers and then possibly project 
where Australian numbers might go as they track along with the American numbers. One really interesting thing about the Australian data is we asked this question. Compared to the first month you had your smart speaker, would you say you're now using it more, less, or the same amount? So from the good news perspective, a majority of people saying they're using it more or the same amount, implying that after that sort of new toy period wears off, people continue to use it uh, the same or more. But there is a little more than a third of users who say they're now using it less. And that is the kind of finding that would lead to people not getting another one, not telling people you should use it too, you should buy one too. Um, And that's a number we're likely going to want to focus in on in future studies and get a sense for. Uh, That number for less is lower in the United States. Um, So perhaps in the United States, most people are on the Amazon platform. Maybe that's a factor. Uh, But it is interesting to see how many people who have a smart speaker in Australia say that after the shiny new toy period ended, they are using it less. So that was one interesting finding we found here. In our last data section here, let's look at some of the brands in the online audio space, uh, streaming services, and see how those have developed in the last year. So first, we merely asked about awareness of different streaming services. And here's the percentage of Australians who say that they are aware of each of these brands. And the top two lines are really kind of amazing, Spotify and Apple Music. If you know this, we've gotten basically the exact same estimate all four years. Uh, they, they tie each other pretty much every time, almost to the number, and this year on the number, both with 88% of Australians saying, yes, I have heard of that service, Spotify or Apple Music. Uh, coming in third place is Google Play Music. You see that uh, for the first two years, we called it Google Play All Access. They have converged now on the name Google Play Music, and we get the same estimate year on year at 63%. SoundCloud coming up a bit, awareness up to 46%, just ahead of Amazon Music. And then uh, we continue to track, well, kind of amazingly, we've gotten exactly 10% each of four years for Tidal. And for the second year of looking at Deezer, just a one-point gain, very modest at 6%. That's awareness of these brands. Uh, We can compare that to the American numbers. And you see that Spotify and Apple Music are both better known. Uh, They're still the top two um, among these in the United States. We also have Pandora, which would be even yet better known. But the top two is the same, but well behind in the United States uh, as compared to Australia for those top two brands. The Google number, exactly the same. The other big difference here is Amazon Music, and we can kind of see through all this data. Amazon services are just more exposed and get higher numbers in the United States, and far more Americans aware of Amazon Music uh, as compared to Australians. Have you used these services in the last month? Well, as we've also seen consistently, while the awareness of Apple Music is as high in Australia as as is the case for Spotify, it just continues to lag way behind Spotify in terms of usage. So we see another gain for Spotify year on year from 40% of Australians up to 44% now, saying they've used Spotify in the last month. And really none of the other brands that we look at showing significant gains in usage, all in the single digits and no one really breaking out. So it's right now it's in almost entirely Spotify's game in terms of music services uh, being delivered online. One thing we see is that these services come out differently in terms of uh, whether they're being listened to on a free service um, that typically uh, is ad-supported or if people pay for a subscription. And uh, in particular, 60%, three out of five Spotify users say they pay for a subscription as compared to 40% who use the free service. Um, And again, when people pay for a subscription, they go out of the reach of advertisers who might be interested in these platforms. If we track that data for Spotify on this page, we see that that number continues to change. So we see more people using Spotify and more people paying for a subscription. Uh, 
uh, again, rendering them outside the reach of advertisers. Uh, and it's typically the most heavy users who will pay for a subscription naturally. Uh, if they're using it more, they're getting more value out of it and might put a price tag on us using Spotify in this fashion. So that was uh, you know, how they're using it. We, we also see that if they used it in the last month, they very likely used it in the last week. It was 44% in the last month, 40% uh, in the last week. And that same story with really Spotify uniquely showing growth and far surpassing its competition. We also have asked in each of our four studies about using YouTube for music. And we see a small dip this year from 48% of 40 to 45% of Australians saying that they've used YouTube for music in the last week. And we may have written that off as perhaps just a random survey story or, or something, but it actually matches what we saw in the United States where the numbers dipped. Uh, we also saw a small dip in Canada, and we've seen it in some other Project. Still enormous numbers, still huge numbers of people saying they use YouTube for music and did so in the last week. But it'll be interesting to see uh, going forward uh, what might happen as a result of uh, as we track this forward and see if that dip is anything sustained. Uh, but finally, the sort of forward momentum of people using YouTube for music seems to have been stopped. And perhaps TikTok or other competition that they might have may be digging in a little bit to usage of YouTube for music. So let's finish up by looking at some general observations that we have, and then we can lead into any questions and answers. Um, clearly, as you can see from the data, there's a lot going on in the audio space. You wouldn't be on this webinar if you didn't know this already. Uh, the space is changing, and there's a need for the kind of data we're producing here as anyone in the space tries to understand where things are going, what the opportunities are, who's under threat, etc. AM, FM, DAB plus radio, very strong in this study, much more strongly than we see in the United States or in other countries where we're doing infinite dial. That's one of the ways that uh, infinite dial Australia has really distinguished itself is that you see the strength of the broadcast radio companies, the stations, the uh, whole platform, certainly by comparison to some other countries. Podcasting continuing to grow in Australia, lags in comparison to trends we see in the United States, and um, that will continue to be of interest. Uh, we see this fascinating duality where people are more familiar with the concept, less likely to engage in it. And again, I do believe that as there is more and more good Australian content talking about topics and things that Australians are interested in and Australians understand that it's more than just catch-up radio. I do think these numbers very well could uh, catch up to the United States numbers. Smart, smart speakers, an exciting new pathway for audio consumption, still relatively modest numbers in Australia. Uh, really, Google seems to have it all to itself. Perhaps if Amazon makes a stronger push, it'll create more demand across the board. Um, but regardless, people are, are using them and uh, it'll be interesting to continue to watch how those develop. So those are the main points from Infinite Dial 2020. I thank you for your time and attention, and I will now happily try to answer any questions that any of you have. Thank you, Larry. Uh, we have been compiling the questions that have come in during the presentation. And we will try to address as many as we can, either via the chat or during this Q&A section now. But if we don't get to yours, or if you have additional questions, please do email us at info at edisonresearch.com. So we have a question. Uh, Lisa asks, will Larry share any insights into how different age groups or generations are consuming audio? Well. Thank you, Lisa. Good question. Uh, as you can see, I didn't as part of this uh, preliminary look at the data. Uh, but uh, as Lori just said, if you have specific questions, you can email us at info at edisonresearch.com and we'll be happy to try to accommodate you. And uh, as we continue to bring out numbers from the study, uh, one of the things that we know people are interested in is looking at it by age groups, perhaps 
you know, 12 to 34 versus 35, 54 versus 55 plus, et cetera. And so uh, again, feel free to request things directly, uh, but also just keep uh, watching the space and uh, you will be seeing more information coming out from that as well. Okay. Um... Lindsay asks, was the telephone survey conducted with mobiles and landlines? And the answer is yes. Yeah, you can't really pull a, a telephone sample. It's long since past the point where you can't get a representative sample just from landlines. So we are uh, dialing both uh, mobile numbers and landline numbers in appropriate proportions to represent the Australian population. We have a question from Rob. Are the ownership differences a function of relative costs? Um, I'm assuming Rob uh, may be asking about the smart speakers. Um, and uh, I did, so I uh, should mention that we do a lot of work on the smart speaker space here in the United States. Um, and if you are interested in this space, we do an ongoing series of projects with NPR, the sort of closest equivalent we have in the United States of the ABC. And um, if you look, if you Google smart audio report, uh, you will find a number of studies we've published, which speaks to many topics uh, relating to the smart speaker space, uh, uh, which can get to that. Now, I will, again, make the point that's American research, uh, but um, you, you might find a lot to dig in to there. And, uh, actually makes me realize I should talk to our, our friends at Commercial Radio Australia, Podcast One in Triton, and perhaps others, and see if there would be interest in a smart audio report, a specific study about uh, smart speakers and how people use them, et cetera, for Australia. But there's quite a lot of information there if people have questions about smart speakers. Okay, and of course, um, will you be sharing this presentation after the webinar? And yes, um, keep an eye on uh, edisonresearch.com for both the deck and a replay of the webinar. And thank you again to Larry and to everyone that joined us today. Yes, thank you. Thanks for joining. And uh, look, we'll be getting everyone the deck and uh, replay of this straight away. Thanks a lot.